You're tuned into the It's Real podcast with your hosts, Kayla Callender and Andrew Yagi. Each week, we'll talk about what happens behind the scenes working full time in real estate and share with you real life stories, our successes, and failures as we work to help consumers and industry professionals reach their real estate and real life goals. Here we go. It's episode 25 of the It's Real podcast. I'm Andrew Yegi and I'm a real estate agent. I'm Kayla Callender and I'm a mortgage lender. Hey, Andrew. Kayla, episode 25, a quarter of the way to 100 episodes, although I feel like we're at like a, a one a month or one every every three I weeks. But... Uh, well, they say that most don't make it to 20, so we're be- beating the odds, basically. So, And the award for the most inconsistent podcast goes to... You know what? I'd rather be inconsistent in doing it than not doing it. <laughs> That's right. 1% improvements, Kayla. And you know what? Now that we're kind of getting into a little bit more of the off season, getting into the fall and you know more, more, more towards winter, I think maybe our consistency will go up a little bit. Probably will because we're out of lake season. We're out of kind of chaos. And this is the time of year in real estate when things just kind of get quieter. You know, when there's snow on the ground, people really, a lot of times, they don't want to move during the holidays. They don't want to, you know, really get out of the house as much because it's so darn cold. So this is a time of year in our business. We see usually a little bit of a slowdown. Yeah, absolutely. What's new in your world this week? You know, this week in my world, um, it is pretty quiet personally, which is good. I need that because it just allows me to recharge. You know that I'm a lake girl, so we've been busy. And I did like some thinking. And Andy, we were at the lake almost every weekend for the last six months. And when you think about it, I'm like, well, no wonder my house is so dirty. No wonder my stuff hasn't gotten done. And in the last two weeks, we've gotten more done than we have all year. So I'm thankful for a little bit of cold weather. I never thought I'd say that, but just a little bit of a slowdown because it allows me to be more productive. So that's kind of it. But what about in your world? You're always moving and shaking. What's going on in, in the Yegi household? Yeah, well, I was just going to say before we, you know, talk about me, I was just kind of admiring. I thought I saw on social media you and uh, you and and uh, all of your friends and everyone. It looked like you spent Halloween out at the lake. We did. We painted pumpkins. And by the way, there are some really great painting pens on Amazon if you're looking for some. Um, but yeah, we just—it's a nice getaway, kind of cooler weather. We've done some cold, you know, cold plunges, and the colors are so beautiful, and it's just nice. Um, we uh, just got the dock out, I think, two weeks ago. So we're we are the type that we go all out as late as we can. Sure. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what's been new with me? I, you know, just kind of tying up loose ends, you know, like we've talked, fall is always a busy time between, you know, taking part in some family farming and then, you know, real estate's been pretty busy for us and, and for our team here. Um, you know, definitely starting to see a shift, but having a lot of good conversations with people, Kayla, about, uh, you know, kind of next year uh, and kind of what what's in store, which, you know, I'm pretty optimistic and, you know, kind of excited about the real estate market, you know, especially as we just saw rates drop quite a bit. And we'll, of course, talk more about that in a little bit. But yeah, a lot of people just kind of are, you know, I just had someone like had to kick them out of my office and said, hey, I have an appointment with Kayla here that uh, that I can't miss yeah. because I feel like I cancel on you too much as it is. But, uh, you know, we're kind of talking about some opportunities down the road. And so it's just all about really having conversations and going out and kind of finding the motivated um, people. I uh, last week had a chance uh, to host kind of a uh, potential physician, him and his wife, that are pondering, you know, moving to our area. So kind yeah. of uh, greeted them, spent some time with them, showing them around um you know and the like and talking housing Mm -hmm. and you know they're just there's not enough out there which it's you know kind of the same old story uh different day and we'll talk more about some of those stats as well too kayla but and it's nice though that i mean it's nice that we're still having conversations with people but sometimes it's just that conversion factor it's like they get approved they talk to the realtor they look and it's kind of like a little bit of exhaustion that they experience because inventory is an issue um, so I, I, f- I feel you on that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We didn't get out to the lake to paint pumpkins or anything like that. <laughs> but, uh, our girls, we, uh, we had them and, uh, oh, and, uh, and carved pumpkins. And, uh, I think Ivy even, uh, 
got to uh, wow. Got okay, she's adorable. Yeah. Uh, is she sleeping through the night? She is. She's for the most part. I mean, every once in a while we have a tough night, but you know, for nine months, uh, not doing bad. I was talking to one of my friends uh, just today who has a, a son who's similar in age and just, oh man, the baby doesn't sleep and uh, just, uh, it's kind of crazy. So we're very lucky. You're blessed. <laughs> well, they're beautiful. Thank you. Um. Kay Kayla, tell us about the market and, you know, from a mortgage standpoint and rates. You know, last Friday, we saw rates take a little bit of a dive in the in like the best way. They declined. We saw roughly on average rates decrease about a half of a percent, Andy. That's not so, a little bit of a dive, Kayla. That's yeah. like that's a lot of bit of a dive compared a to a lot of bit of a dive. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So what we saw was it there was a big change Friday. And then Monday we saw rates come back up a bit. So overall we're still down a bit. Um now if you look at that graph, kind of that blue one at the bottom underneath, mm -hmm. you can kind yeah. of see, I mean you can see that it's been coming down here. But wow, Friday we saw some movement. And I will tell you what, it was a little bit of pandemonium, but maybe not in a way that you would think. You see. When people hear rates drop, then they're kind of panicking, like, I should go get approved. I should go look for a house. Well, by the time a person becomes, you know, pre-qualified and they've started searching, I mean, Monday hit and we saw rates kind of sneak back up. So I got to see a few of my clients that were in contract that had not locked a rate yet take advantage of Friday. Friday to like more Monday morning and they locked in, they had done their homework. They, you know, they hadn't locked some clients have, and that's okay. But mm -hmm. that's how we're seeing success is that people are doing their homework and then getting ready. And, you know, if you're not in contract, you usually can't lock, but gosh, we had some really lucky people being able to lock in and take advantage and, and save mm -hmm. probably a few hundred bucks. No, that's really, really awesome. Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. you seeing, you know, when you see rates drop, you know, your social media is blowing up your, your news, your alerts, are you finding that people are reaching out to look at homes more? What are you seeing at that point? Or are you not seeing anything at all kind of on your end? You know, I feel like, you know, right now in the market, if an individual needs housing for some reason, you know, they're, they're out there looking. If someone doesn't need so I, I I think people look at this as, you know, a very positive factor in that, hey, you know, there's more hope for the future. But I think I don't know that it, you know, caused, you know, a spree of people being like, hey, I need to go look at houses right now because, mm -hmm. hey, rates dropped, you know, precipitously. I just I, I think, you know, combine that with the seasonality, with the fact that we're into fall and, you know, winter is nearing. There are some people that have just said, hey, you know, what, we're just going to hold off. <coughs> next year right mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. um are a lot of questions that i get around this time of year is you know can i still get into a home before year end some people want to whether they're in a certain tax bracket or they want to purchase before year end i've had a lot of questions revolving around that in the last week and you know what's a typical time frame to close on a home it, it truly depends on the situation whether the seller is motivated, the the buyer can move, are they in a lease? You know, there's so many moving factors, but, you know, we're able to, you know, I speak on in terms of where I work, but, you know, a common question is how soon can you get it done? And my, my answer back is how quickly can I get a purchase agreement in my hands and how quickly can the client and realtor and all parties work together? But we see some closings three weeks, um, 30 days. So if you're listening to this as a consumer, and you're wondering, can I get into a house before Christmas? Yes, you sure can. I would absolutely. say if you're in contract before, by the end of the month, absolutely, it could be possible. It's it's definitely an option. Kayla, if I came to you today with a buyer and said, hey, you know, how quick can we move? What what are you seeing right now? If someone is all, you know, they've got all their documents in line, you know, for you to get an appraisal ordered and how quick can you close something? You know, I literally just had one. We locked it in, got everything like Thursday last week, locked it in Friday. Yay. And it's already, I just got an email that it's submitted to underwriting. We have everything we need. And wow. so that's quick. But the clients, you know, it makes a difference if a client 
is W2 versus self-employed, like has, you know, multiple businesses or rentals or right. they have a house to sell, or maybe they, um, they're taking out of their 401k and they have to track the funds. So we can get it conditionally approved really quickly. Um, as long as the client has everything to us, I mean, we can have an approval within days. It's just a matter of, you know, how complicated is the file? Sure. How much do you have to document? You know, we've got some clients that get a gift from mom. So mom is going to, you know, write a check and then give it, you know, we just have to track, but we can see it done pretty quickly. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're seeing some things move quick on our end too, which is, which is pretty awesome, but I guess yeah. it should, you know, with the way the market is and, and being a little bit slower. Yeah. And I think people are, are wanting to, to move quickly because they just, I think when you can move quickly, you can lock in a shorter term rate you can just get it done. I think it's just that sense of urgency. Appraisers, title companies, insurance companies, they're not as probably inundated as they were before. So there's just a lot more flexibility. Right. Absolutely. Well, speaking of the market, you know, we talk rates a lot, Kayla, and, and obviously we see where things are. And, you know, obviously these are national average numbers, but I would, I, I see from some lenders in the area and probably you as well, rates that are quite a bit lower. How about you? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing, you know, 7.41 is a national average. I mean, depending on, you know, this is a perfect scenario, like a perfect example, great credit. You know, I'm still seeing rates a little bit lower than this. And especially if they are like bond programs or down payment assistance, um, I'm seeing them a little bit lower. So, you know, this national 7.41, pretty, pretty normal. But remember, there's also FHA, you know, you can see that your 30 year FHA, that's a bit lower too. Um, right. you know, there's other options too, that will show a little bit lower rates. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Mm -hmm. Kayla, one thing I want to focus on a little bit today is, you know, we talk, you know, rates quite a bit and we talk about, you know, the, you know, make generalities about the fact that, Hey, you know, inventory is down, you know, sales are down, you know, it's challenging out there for real estate agents and also for lenders, but you know, how far down and, and where are we actually? So, you know, I did pull up some numbers. That I think, you know, would be helpful. And because, you know, some people who aren't nerds when it comes to stats, they're probably, you know, tuning out and saying, yeah, I don't really care. But I know there are a lot of people that also do care about the numbers. And so just kind of looking, Kayla, at like the Fargo market. So I pull up stats for, for your market. And so a number of listings that are on the market, you can kind of see, you know, the blue line for active listings. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can kind of see that it's up marginally from about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can kind of see how listing prices are trending. The absorption rate's always really interesting. And that basically tells us, you know, like at this point in time, you know, we have a hair over in the Fargo market, three months um, worth of homes on the market. And what's, what that's saying is if no additional homes were listed today, Kayla, just the fact that it would take us, you know, a hair over three months to sell all of the houses and to run out of houses mm -hmm. that are available. Thank you for explaining that, Andy, because I think a lot of consumers see these things like, what does a listing mean? What does that mean? What is absorb? They don't know that. Yeah. So I love that you go into detail so that people understand what that truly means. Yeah. So it kind of, I mean, obviously, you know, some good other general statistics, the sold to list ratio. And that basically says what percent of list price um, is the house selling at? You know, so if a house yeah. was listed at 300,000, this is saying that, well, you know, right now the house is selling for about 98% of what it was listed for. So again, we're seeing some price mm -hmm. reductions. Um, we've seen, uh, you know, a few more. And now, you know, prices are ticking back up, likely because, you know, uh, the number of listings is down a little bit. So there's a little bit more competition. Yeah. In the Fargo market, Kayla, it doesn't take homes long to sell on average about 40 yeah. days on market. So that's, boy, about as low as it's mm -hmm. been, you know, in the last year uh, as well. And just kind of showing the, the overall volume um, of homes. Um, you know, the interesting thing, we always look and we talk, you know, kind of about um, the number of sales and that, hey, there are a lot of sellers out there are people who would consider selling their home that aren't selling simply because where would they go they're they're locked in you know they're they're hooked on a, a low rate and so this is from the national association of realtors kind of talking year over year that in general in the midwest we've seen 20 almost 21 percent less home sell year over year as people hang on to their homes wow. so in yeah. the fargo in the fargo area 
um, looking at this, uh, looking at the homes that have sold, sold listings down about 20% year over year. Mm -hmm. So if one was bucking the trend a little, well, actually, no, not at all. If we're at 20.8% and that's at 20.2, I mean, so pretty much right on track with the national average. When I look at my market of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and I look at homes that have sold, you know, we've sold about 16% less homes. So we are bucking wow. the trend just a little bit as well. Wow. And the numbers are, are very, very similar, although, you know, we're kind of seeing, you know, homes sell for about 94% of list price. We've got slightly less inventory, closer to two months of, of inventory of homes on the market versus three. Mm -hmm. So slightly less healthy market. In Kayla, they say a six month uh, inventory of homes or a six month absorption rate is a healthier, a balanced market, meaning it doesn't favor buyers or sellers. Okay. You know, right now it's still favoring sellers. That's why they call it a seller's market. I did not know that about the six months. That is very interesting, Andy. Yeah. So that's what they say. If, if you have a six month inventory of homes on the market, it's mm -hmm. basically we a level playing field for buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. If you were to have more than that, maybe a seven or eight month um, inventory of homes, that's mm -hmm. going to start to favor buyers and buyers are going to have more options. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be more picky. They can negotiate more. Obviously, you know, when you look back and, and we could dig even deeper in this, but, you know, jumping back to the end of last year, we had in my market one month of homes mm -hmm. uh, available um, you know, December had 2.23 in Fargo, yeah. dropped to 1.85 in February. That's a really, really challenging market if you're looking yeah. at it. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about, you know, your confidence level in the next, I don't even want to say the next couple months, because I think like we just talked about, our industry sees a little bit of a pullback just in general, no matter the, the market. What do you foresee in quarter one of 2024 um, for Fargo and Fergus Falls in general? Do you see more inventory? Do you see people waiting and waiting and, you know, because they don't want to get out of their interest rate in their other house? What are, what are you forecasting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think rates are going to keep coming down. In fact, I was kind of reviewing, you know, we talk about, you know, the Mortgage Bankers Association yeah. and, and we've shown some of their numbers. Um, you know, just a quick graphic here, Kayla, talking about, um, you know, the housing market forecasts and, you know, kind of showing quarter three, you know, which we're obviously through and now we're into quarter four you know, just kind of showing the the predictions yeah. um, as far as rates dropping. I think that's going to continue, Kayla. I think we're going to see rates continue to drop. You know, one of the big reasons why rates did drop is because the jobs report, the unemployment climb, yeah. you know, for the first time in a while, which kind of is, you know, uh, a, a key indicator that, hey, we are headed for a recession. I don't think home values are going to drop. I mean, they, they may stay pretty flat. I think they will. Uh, home values will increase marginally, but I think rates are going to continue, you know, to drop uh, a little bit. And I think I think there are some individuals who have been holding back and not selling. I think they're going to consider uh, putting their homes on the market. I think we'll see more people saying, OK, we need to do something. Let's go do something. Mm -hmm. It's time. I think, so. I think so, too. And I think there's going to be a lot of pent up energy of like, Okay, I need to do something. People that want to upgrade for space, things that are really not even financial. It's just safer neighborhoods, things like that, that finally they're just going to see a little bit of a trickle down of rate, a little bit more comfortable. And that might just be the push they need. And then if rates continue to decline, then even better refinance at that point. And I mm -hmm. hate to throw that out, like just buy and refi because truly I don't feel like we're empathizing with the buyer then. Like this is a big deal. This is a lot more money than maybe they um, were thinking about even a year ago. And to go from, you know, a three bedroom, two bath to a five bedroom, two bath, and it's roughly the same payment. That's, or it's double the payment, let's say. That's what's really hard, I think, for people is, you know, at what point are they reaching kind of that breaking point of, you know what, it's worth it. I'm going to cut costs somewhere else. So I right. foresee that too, Andy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, but, uh, you know, I people need houses. Closings happen every day. Uh, you know, we just really have to work to find, you know, the, the most motivated individuals and, and help them reach their goals because they're certainly out there, Kayla. They're out there. And, and at the end of the day, the lenders and realtors that, you know, stick this out and, 
continue to find the people that need help are the ones that are going to continue to just become better at their jobs, better at empathizing and educating their clients. And I feel like this difficult time is actually just setting us all up for better success. Yeah, I think so as well. I think, uh, you know, a, a little stress, uh, uh, you know, on the market and, you know, yeah. across the professions, I, I think uh, there will be some positives out of it. Yeah, we'll take it. As, we'll take it as a win and a win for 25 episodes. A win for 25, Kayla. Well, I know that you've got something you've got to get to. Was there anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? No, I would just say, I know I say it all the time. I'm your broken record. If you're wondering if it's worth it to get pre-approved, to get pre-qualified, go through the steps because you just never know when that market could shift. You just never know. Why not be prepared? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I would, I would echo that as well. And even, you know, start having conversations early. You know, I had someone come in my office the other day and there are ways out, but hey, we're already having conversations about how to set them up for success, which again, that pre-approval is number one, but number two, connecting and committing to a good local agent uh, is always important as well. It's key. The right team on your side. Diversity. Amen. Well, have a great week, Kayla. Great uh, chatting with you and we'll do it again next week. Or the week after. All right. See ya. Bye.